Hiya, welcome to my channel. I'm Dilly and today I'm up at my Mars house. Um, it was an interesting thing recently where my husband said to her, what did you do for Christmas during the war? And she started um, chatting about all the different things that she did. And I said, oh, please can I film you? She said, no, you can't film me now. I haven't had my hair done. Okay, when are you getting your hair done? So I've waited for her to get her hair done so she feels like she can be seen. And I've come up today and I'm going to film her and ask her about her Christmases during the war. So um, there we are. This is her. You'll hear me in the background, but you won't see any more of me until the end. You'll be pleased to know. Okay, so Ma, the other night when you were um, at my place... Having dinner. Having dinner in your bubble. <laughs> um, and my husband, Lem, asked you what you did um, at Christmas time during the war. And you started talking about it. And then you were saying all these wonderful stories. And I was like, oh, please let me film you. Anyway, you've had your hair done now. I've had my hair done. Please may I film you? I look like 94 now instead of 134. So you said originally... You were talking about at the beginning when you were only 13 when war broke out. Yeah. Okay. And now the very first Christmas, the Christmas of 1939, um, my school was evacuated to Folkestone, which was absolutely ridiculous. We went from London to Folkestone, not much nearer the Germans, but nevertheless, that's what the government did with us. The whole school went to Folkestone. We took over um, a boy's preparatory school called Westbourne House. Those little boys had all been sent to Cornwall, but the girls of Eltham Hill School <laughs> were sent to post. Anyway, we were billeted, I and, and uh, my brothers and sister, were billeted in Victoria Hotel on Marine Crescent, Folkestone. And we all had hotel rooms. It was only a, you know, sort of probably a two-star hotel, nothing very grand. But we were looked after. We were, you know, we were not exactly treated like hotel guests, but we were well looked after. We had um, a lady called Mrs. Bryden, who was one of the mothers of one of the senior girls who was living there. And she was like a house mistress for us. And so, of course, the, we had a very nice Christmas because parents could come and stay at the hotel. So we had a, it was a very, very nice Christmas. And I remember my brother Don, who was then, I suppose, 1939. He would have been he 11 was, or he 12. He was 12. 12. Yeah. Um, he um, g gave a little speech at the end of the meal, and we've never forgotten it, because he, he said, um, thank, thank the hotel proprietor, whose name I can't remember now, and thanked everybody who'd given us such a nice Christmas and for allowing our parents to come because after all we were only introdu intruders <laughs> he couldn't say the word intruders so we've always been intruders <laughs> <laughs> intruders into into the hotel into the hotel and into the and area, area. Yeah, yeah. into the area hmm. anyway that was the first Christmas and you know it was it was different from normal of course because we didn't have the usual things at home and everything but it was it was quite what was, the, what was the food like? Uh, well, there's food, food at the time, because we were only three months into the war and there weren't the terrible shortages that there were later. But I don't think it was exactly, um, you know, grand turkey Christmas dinner or anything like that. But it, it, was, it was adequate, you know. And, of course, we were fed and we had to do nothing towards it, really. You know, we didn't have to help like you would when you were in a billet. You'd, you'd help get the meals. We were or if you're at home. If you're, or you're at home, <laughs> exactly, yes, you know. Yeah. But um, so that, was, that wasn't at all bad. But, of course, then um, France fell in May and uh, my father was very anxious, of course, because we expected an invasion. I mean, we all thought Hitler was going to invade. It was, you know, the obvious. Um, and my dad rang the school. What was happening? And the head said... Well, we've had no instructions. And my dad said, well, I'm sorry, my children will be safer with me here in London than they are in Folkestone, 20 miles from the Germans. Um, I, I'll go and have them back. So my grandfather was sent down by train to pick us up. <laughs> and it was funny because he uh, 
Miss Ozan was most um, anxious that we didn't leave. He said, you know, you can't take the children back to London. And my grandfather said, my dear young lady, <laughs> which of course I, I curled up because, you know, she was, well, she was Miss Ozan, she was the head. And he called, so of course it, everybody at school heard this story, how my grandfather called her, my dear young lady. I'm only acting on my son's instructions, so back we went. Next day, we get a te dad gets a telegram, school moving west, wire if children returning. So Don and I only were put back on the train to go back to Folkestone. Mum wouldn't let Beryl and Alan go. She'd, um, you know, they, she was too, they were too young and she was just worried about them going. So she, she kept them at home. And Don and I went. But may I interrupt here? Yeah. Because Lem, of course, this is my husband, um, his father used to tell the story that when they thought the invasion was coming across the water, they used to pour petrol yeah. and fuel onto the, sea onto the sea and set light to the sea mm. all the time to stop the the invasion, invasion by boats and but, so yeah, on, so which is another part aspect. of the story that a lot of people wouldn't have known. Well, even we didn't of. know because no, we no. didn't see that. But of course, we, used to, we used to walk along the cliffs on the Lees at Folkestone. I mean, it was wonderful. The weather was glorious. You know, we were all suntanned, <laughs> we girls from school. Um, and it, it was a game we used to play. We'd stand on the top of the cliffs and gaze out to sea. You know, stand there and then sort of somebody would come along and see you staring and they'd join you and look out to see you. And somebody else would come along. And I used to do you... that being naughty where I would just <laughs> well, stand we were... somewhere and look up somewhere. Oh, well, and then similar, somebody yeah. comes along to come and see <laughs> we, what you're looking at. That's right, we did. We, <laughs> Obviously we... where I got it from, my naughtiness. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we'd sort of uh, gather a crowd and then we'd move on. <laughs> they'd all be looking out to see, wondering what they were looking at. <laughs> anyway... Next day, we put on a train in Folkestone um, and we just didn't know where we were going. Nobody knew. We just set off, Southern Railway, of course, and it took us by some weird and wonderful route. Um, we were on the train all day. We subsequently learned on the trip that you're going to Abertillery. We none of us had a clue where Abertillery was. And then we were all saying, oh, we're going to have a banana. <laughs> And we ended up in South Wales, in the Usk Valley, in the Abertillery. And uh, we were billeted, of course, from from there. So were you there for the 1940 yes, Christmas? Yes, 1940. Well, now, I've been puzzling about this. We, I don't think we went home for Christmas, you know. I think we were away. But I can't remember which billet I was in for that Christmas. I just can't remember at all. Well, you were allowed not to remember some things, um, <laughs> since you remember the names of hotels and, and everything yeah, else, and I have I just, trouble remembering I just what can't for dinner. picture it, you know. I don't think we came home. I... So, if you can't picture it in the billet and you don't think you came home, can you remember anything about a Christmas while you were away in any of the billets? No, I can't. I just can't. So, I'm wondering whether whether we did. You know, whether we did come back to London or I whether the billet that you were in just didn't do a particularly a Christmas a memorable for you. Christmas. Oh, yes. I don't know. I don't think that would happen because they were the first billets. Of course, I was with a very nice family, uh, an ordinary family. They would have probably celebrated Christmas, and I, I'm so sorry. I just cannot remember. I should have to ask Don. Yeah, he's the, he's the one who rem remembers all these things. Yes. Um, you can't remember the the um, times where you know where no, you were billeted. No. Uh, any Christmases in particular where you were away from home and and what you had for Christmas and so on. But talk me through what say Grandma would have done at Christmas if she if she when she was mm. in London. I know she wouldn't necessarily have had all her children with her. No. What sort of thing would she have been able to provide well, she, for she, Christmas? Well, she kept chickens in the garden at the time and at one stage rabbits as well but she would have killed because in that in those days we didn't have turkey at christmas chicken was our christmas dinner that was a luxury chicken you didn't have it every every day of the week like you can now mm. um it would have been chicken she would have, you know she would have done that because she could get her own and obviously there would have been the the, the family meat ration which wasn't very much but it, she would have um 
got you know got something to have had for the for the Christmas. She would have been careful. And so would she, did um, mums and things save up for Christmas? They save up their rations, well, like the family rations, to be able to make something a little bit more people special did, at Christmas. People did, did try to do that. I mean, you you couldn't exactly save meat or anything no, like that. I but suppose but dried fruit and things like yeah, that. Yeah, you didn't get well. That was because dried fruit came from Greece and places like that. So you didn't have. Um, that wasn't of, even on rations. Um, it was probably there were probably points. It was a point system for things. Um, certainly, tin fruit and things were you know very rare, and it, it was all it was all done on a point system, and the, the 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 rations tended to alter slightly. Sometimes they you know they went down, and you you, you were notified that you were getting less. But um, I mean, with a family, uh, it was. A little bit easier because you had more rations and you could make something do. I mean, because when if you were living on your own, you it was a stupid little amount that you were getting. It would mm. be very difficult. But with a family, it was a little bit easier. Um, I mean, Mum would have had the Christmas tree, of course, you know, just the same, and she would have decorated it and had decorations up in the house. Yeah. But um, I I don't think in nineteen by the time nineteen forty came. It wasn't as dire as it got, but I came home in July 1942, and we had Christmas at home then. What, the Christmas of 1942? Christmas of 1942, I, I remember that, because Mary was only three. She was talking to me on the phone about it, you know, she said, oh, I remember you making that lovely table centre with a mirror, with a snowman on it, and you'd put little things in the snowman little little gift things you know that sort of thing um and once again we, you know mum would have well, don would have killed the chicken <laughs> it was his job and uh and possibly a rabbit as well because to say they they kept rabbits as well in the garden i mean you know we had a very small garden in 68 yes. manor lane am i right in remembering that grandma had an apple tree there two apple trees yes all oh, they were in wonderful. the very small garden so yeah. would she have ha been able to store the apples from we, the she summer. She tried. To... We had they were um, beautiful apples. We had an eater and a cooker, um, and she used to pack them down. You know, sort of try to keep them. Um, and she did a, did a lot of bottling of fruit in those in kilner jars. Mm. So she would, um, you know, she would stew fruit and bottle it and that sort of thing for Christmas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She'd you'd. Yeah, she'd make a, um, a pie, probably, an apple pie or something mm. like that, you mm. know. Mm. Don't know about Christmas pudding. Can't remember that, you know. Well, that would have been you, a lot of fruit, because the, 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 all, fruit. The, all the magazines had, you know, sort of not exactly make do and men, but, no, you but know. they were looky-likey kind of things, oh, weren't they? I yes. remember watching some of the programmes and uh, where they would say that they, it was called... Uh, a turkey roll or something, and it wasn't turkey at all. It was made out of bread and potato and yeah, things like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we always say, 1942, um, I was then home. Um, I think that we were all back again because the raids were a lot less. Um, and we we were home for Christmas. Um, but so Dad wasn't there. He He came home... I think, I can't remember, it was January or February and had his embarkation leave for going abroad, you know. Granddad wasn't there because he was off doing his thing. In, in, the, in, the, in Marines, the Royal, Royal yes. Marines. Yeah. And obviously he would have been on rations as well. Would his rations have counted in the Marines or would Grandma, oh, no, have Grandma had would, his no, the rations? Book, his book, this book would have gone with him. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so there'd be no, um, yeah, okay. no, no, just, just, just the uh, people in the house. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> She got, I think she got extra milk because Mary was a, you know, young child. Yeah. Uh, so we we managed on things like that. Um, yes. So I can't I can't honestly remember um, each individual Christmas, but and of course presents were um, you know <laughs> a bit, me bit, bit meager. <laughs> a bit bit meager. Mm. Yeah. I remember I ha did have um, a nice. Uh, what we call a dressing table set with a brush and a comb and a mirror. Very, very pretty. In 1943, of course, rations were still even more difficult. Well, it was getting worse each year, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yes, it was. Yes, things were less... I mean, at one stage, it, it was even... Um, potatoes were hard to come by. Really? You, you, you queued up, you know, and hoped if the if the green grocer had 
got potatoes, you know, the word went around and there'd be a queue. And, you know, you were sort of exactly the, the, the although they weren't on points or anything like that the green grocer himself would ration only so many pounds a person and that mm. sort of thing which is why i suppose then if you're living in the country and you can try and grow your own or you've got oh, a bit exactly. of a garden and yeah. you can try and grow well, your like own granddad but, fred did you yes, see but yeah. grandma of course with a small garden two apple trees yeah. chickens <laughs> and the rabbits <laughs> rabbits and a shelter, yeah. and a that's right. The shelter took up a lot of the garden anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, she didn't have much room to grow anything yeah. else. I, but remember. I know Granddad because Granddad Fred. This is my father's um, dad, by the way, for viewers. Um, he kept rabbits and chickens, but he grew a lot of his own vegetables. Oh, he did. As he had well, a big allotment. He? Yes, and mm. yes, they didn't go short of vegetables or anything like that. Mm. Uh, but so, Mum had to. And he actually was in. Kent, so he wasn't exactly in the countryside, but he wasn't in the not, not centre in, of in, in, the, in the middle of London, London like no, like mum and dad. Yeah, no, I can't isolate all the the wartime Christmases from our normal Christmases. You know, there are just pictures in my mind of us all round the great big square table. You know, five children and uh, mum and dad. What did you? Um... I know that when you were billeted in some of the billets, one of the billets in particular, I know that she practically starved all of you, but, or whatever the set, yeah, situation yeah. was. She didn't feed you very well. You just lived within your rations. Yes, Apart we were hungry all the time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I know that it did affect your health, you girls. Mm. Um, but apart from that, did you often feel hungry? No, not not at home. I didn't. No, I was only hungry when I was evacuated. So, in in, in spite of the meagre rations, um, you were they grandma uh, was <laughs> yeah. able to um, cobble things together. Yeah, in order. often wonder whether she deprived herself, which I think she probably did, um, to make sure we all we children had uh, enough to eat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she probably probably did, but I, no, I don't remember being being actually hungry. I will say that. Mm. Um, mm. that certainly was when I was evacuated that was pretty horrible <laughs> yeah and <coughs> remind me when it, at that particular billet who were the girls that were with you Brenda Clare no not Brenda Clare Brenda Clark Joyce Jobbins Pam Bliss no she wasn't Bliss then she was um, she wasn't married what am I talking Pam Hall <laughs> and me and Pam Hall and I shared a bed in one room, and Joyce Jobbins and Brenda shared a bed in the other room, because Mr and Mrs Hughes had one son, Glyn, who was away at college. And I think just before we ca we um, billeted on her, um, her husband had a stroke and had to give up work, of course, and quite a severe stroke. And I think that's why she took in four evacuees to make the because the, the money they got was was quite a pittance really and of course they asked parents the school asked parents if they would subsidize their children and many p parents were able to but of course dad was in the royal marines anyway and uh, he would got five children so so subsidize each child in each billet to for to half a crown a week or five bob a week whatever it was it's really well, he just wouldn't have had the money. He wouldn't no. have had it to do it. No. So he couldn't subsidise. And, I, and you know, when I look back, and I think Mrs Hughes was obviously trying to make the evacuees' money um, feed the family because she didn't have any other income, I suppose, mm. with her husband so not feed working. Her husband, yeah. her son when he came home, yeah, and, which four was girl, was herself and four yeah. girls. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's why we had such, and obviously, looking back, she obviously was felt guilty about it because I told you the story of the bread pudding, didn't I? That um, Joyce Jobbins' mother sent. That uh, the the um, <laughs> I have to laugh about it now. Obviously, Joyce had written home and told her mum that you know she was hungry, and um, mum sent this bread pudding and big parcel, and the post office van delivered it from Mrs Hughes. And apparently um, he had a, an urn of oil in his van delivering it to the British restaurant because each town 
had a British restaurant, I think for a shilling or one and six, I think it was, you could get a meal. And it was, you know, very, very basic. But people could go, if, they, if they'd got one and six months, they could go and get a meal. Anyway, apparently the, the oil urn had tipped over and all his parcels had got smothered in oil. So he handed her this oily parcel and said to her, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, the urn fell over. He said, yeah, I don't know what's in it, but perhaps you better undo it, to see whether it's damaged. Anyway, when she undid it, of course, she found bread pudding. And when we got home from school, she was waiting. She was so angry. How dare your mother send food to you? Does she think I don't feed you properly? And she was so angry, you know. And, and we realised afterwards it just was because she knew she didn't yeah. feed us properly. Guilty conscience. Yeah. yeah. And then another time, because we went to school on... Um, Saturdays, because we shared with the county school. We also went to school in the rooms over the co-op and in the Blina Gwent Chapel. So our I, our school um, syllabus sort of thing was uh, divided in. You'd, you'd, you'd go to the county school for the science lessons and then you'd walk through the town and go to the co-op room for art lessons and you'd walk up to Blina Gwent Chapel for other lessons. It was, you know, and you'd mark meet all the girls going backwards and forwards all to their different forms I don't know how we learned anything really <laughs> well you obviously did because you were really good <coughs> yeah. at the end of it and you got your yeah, matric and all the rest yeah. of it didn't you that's well, right we, we went to school on Saturdays so we had Mondays off and on Mondays we each did our washing she gave us each a bowl of water and a bar of soap and we did, did our washing all individually in separate bowls and we and how, her garden went up the mountain so it was like this where we used to go and hang our washing out on a Monday, and uh, we went to the pictures in the afternoon. So often, if we if we got pocket money, we'd go to the pictures in the Monday afternoon. You weren't allowed out in the evenings because there was a curfew of eight o'clock unless your host and hostess took you anywhere, and of course ours didn't. Anyway, we went we went to this the pictures. The and cinema, we went, as in yeah. The cinema, yeah, went to the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> we always used to call it pictures the, when I was to, young as well. Went to the cinema, yeah. And um, on the way there, we we bought a stale cake each from the local baker. I don't know what they what they were. I can't remember. And um, sat and ate the cake in the pictures. And uh, when we got home, she was you know fuming again. Um, how dare you let people see you sitting eating cakes in the, in the how cinema? How did she know? Well, some, one of her neighbours had gone oh. home and said, "Oh, I saw your girls." Oh, mind in, you, small town. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw Everybody your girls in the in the pictures, all eating cakes, stale cakes at that. They were, yeah. <laughs> and she was so angry with us for you know we didn't know what to say. After the war, and rations were still, oh yeah, <laughs> were I, still I, tight. I, I, Do you remember, say, the nineteen forty six Christmas, for instance? Well, I think it was probably a bit better. I mean, we were still rationed. Meat was still rationed and everything. Meat was still rationed until after I had Lynn and Mark. I know, it was in the 1950s. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Like that there. Yeah. Oh, no, yes, by which time, of course, Dad was, de Dad was demobbed by then, by 1946. 